Hello my soccer universe. Match the five of the Champions League saw a lot of goals with 67 in 18 games, the majority of which came on Tuesday with 40, only 27 on Wednesday, which is still three goals per game. Of course, not as great as the 40, but it was also due to quite a few lopsided results, especially on Tuesday, where we had four wins of four goals or more. And then only a big one, surprisingly big one, on Wednesday and much tighter games overall. However, we can also split to Tuesday and Wednesday in the overall storylines. I mean, on Tuesday, it was all about the bad performance of the big money teams, big oil and, of course, the energy drinks. Both Red Bull teams, really, really bad. There's only one win for Red Bull so far, and that was Salzburg. Believe it or not, a Salzburg team that is complete disarray, losing at Leverkusen. Big, but also Leipzig, still winless, lost against Inter, which was kind of expected. But then there are, of course, the big oil teams in PSG, very likely to go out after another loss, this time at Bayern Munich. That was not too surprising. It also got to be said. And then Manchester City. What's happening to Manchester City? They probably will move on, but having a 3-0 lead late and still only manage a draw against Feyenoord, that is one of the biggest surprises. And then on Wednesday, it was all about the big duel between Liverpool and Real Madrid, and Liverpool showed what they're made of. Absolute dominant performance, still the only perfect team. Inter is probably the only other really good team. They're perfect in the sense they have not conceded yet. I would say that right here, we have the four most dangerous teams in Europe at the moment. Liverpool and Inter are probably the most solid teams so far. Arsenal, have a turnaround. I think they can be scary with what they can offer up front and don't overlook Atalanta at this very moment. We also had a six goal performance by Atleti, very uncharacteristically so. So yeah, maybe one of the Spanish teams, Barcelona Atleti, I'm not sure about Real Madrid with all the injuries, can feature as well. But before we look at the overall situation, let's recap match day five. I guess unconvincing is the only way to describe Milan's 3-2 win at Slovan Bratislava, their third win in a row in the Champions League, and that's a positive. Also another positive probably is that you fought back against an opponent that gave you quite some trouble. On the negative side, this is Slovan Bratislava. This is a team that has lost every single Champions League game so far by at least two goals. And the last one at home to Dinamo Zagreb was in a 4-1 loss. So that is not good overall. And especially in the first half, you should have gone down. I mean, Slovan had the better chances in the first half. You take the lead because Tammy Abraham finds Christian Pulisic, who then runs through a goal in the 21st minute to make it 1-0. But then you thought you take control. But from a corner kick just a few minutes later, Slovan could launch a counter-attack where Savidis with a beautiful pass finds Barsegayan. He converts to make it 1-1. And yes, Kudos to Reinders for not committing the red card foul onto that play. And with some luck, it has to be said, Milan went into the half 1-1. However, then Okafor came off, Leao came on, and Milan were very dominant without much speed. It was only slow, but they had tons of possession. In the end, it is a Leao run after Fofana pass that in the 68th minute allows Milan to take the lead. And then a horrible back pass to Tammy Abraham at 71st. Makes it 3-1 and seemingly settles the game. At that point, you probably should have added some more. However, they went into to cruise mode and then Marcelli very late on makes a beautiful shot and it's 2-3 and that's the end result because Milan more or less routinely saw it out as I said unconvincing overall on the plus side Kuczka who plays for Sloan Bratislava former Milan player and Milan fan actually got quite the welcome by the Milan fans and that was a little bit heartwarming to see I gotta say at the same time, Atletico Madrid show how it's done at smaller opponents away from home. Sparta Prague were not as big of an outsider as were Slovan against Milan. Atletico won 6-0. Julian Alvarez goal in the 15th minute. Beautiful free kick. Set them already on the way. Then a shot by Llorente that flies past everyone and takes actually a wicked deflection. Makes it 2-0 before the half and that already settled the game. Second half, four more goals. Julian Alvarez again, Griezmann and then Angel Correa twice. It was a proper route. And Barcelona also got the expected 3-0 win. They were huge favorites. They controlled a larger game. They played without Laminia Mal, but they got the win thanks to Lewandowski Brace's 100th and 101st goal in the Champions League. Only Messi and Ronaldo have more, with Cristiano leading, of course, with 140 goals. 
So he's in rarefied air. First one was a penalty that kind of confirmed Barcelona's overall dominance in the first half, but couldn't really break through more. Danny Olmo makes it 2-0 and then laid on Lewandowski kind of makes the ball and reflective of how the game went. However, again, credit to all the Brest fans that come. The largest away day for Brest, 5,000 fans for an incredible experience. Fortunately, not the result that they would have liked. Ahead of the game, Salzburg said they want to show their Champions League face and give a good account of themselves at Leverkusen. Alas, nothing like that ever happened. It took only five minutes until a penalty, a very questionable penalty, was called against Salzburg and Wirtz duly converts. However, just saying that the penalty was not fair does not hide how bad the Salzburg performance was. Grimaldo in the 11th minute with a free kick converts 2-0 and Salzburg completely fell apart. The way that Wirtz was just waltzing through the defense to make it 3-0 was indicative of how bad Salzburg were on that day. In the second half, Patrick Schick and Garcia add to more, but this could have gotten really, 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 really ugly. Salzburg in absolute disarray. Leverkusen with a good performance. Sit down 10 points and a poise to advance. The replay of the 2020 final between Bayern and PSG was overall a relatively one-sided affair. I mean, it was not a great game. Bayern largely controlled it. PSG had their occasional attacks but couldn't decide whether they want to sit deep or they want to control it and that was the undoing. The undoing was also Usman Dembele not keeping his mouth shut, getting a yellow card that really beat them back on the second half. Before that, Safonov, who played instead of Donnarumma, made a mistake ahead of the 1-0 where Kiminje from a short distance could head it in to give Bayern the deserved lead. Second half, Usman Dembele with a stupid tackle is sent off with a second yellow card. And yes, with a man less, PSG actually was a little bit more dangerous, but Bayern just decided to defend it and see the game easily out. And looking at the Champions League table, two worlds collide at the Sun Zero. Inter with a narrow 1-0 win thanks to Lakeba own goal. Sit now at least for a day top of the table, but that is only half the story. Inter have yet to concede in the Champions League. It was another very routine 1-0 win for Inter. Overall, the better team needed one opportunity at the Marco Freaky that Lokeba deflects into his own net to get the lead and then they see it out easily. They were always closer to the second goal than Leipzig were to their first and maybe that's the one thing that you can blame Inter for. But overall, deserve it win. And Inter look really, really, really strong without overstretching themselves. The shocker of Tuesday evening came in Manchester where City led 3-0 Easy cruising against Feyenoord in the 75th minute and still only managed a 3-3 draw. At least a five game losing streak is over but this game definitely felt like a loss because City controlled most of the game. Feyenoord did not really show much going forward. Erling Haaland with a penalty gave City the lead just before the half and then right after the half a Gundogan shot is deflected by Hanschko and then Haaland himself in typical fashion converts to make it 3-0 and then the defensive errors came. Guardiol for the first one where then Hajj Musa makes it 1-3 and suddenly the fragile city defense completely fell apart especially Ederson was not looking good on the next two goals on the cross by Lotomba that went on the post across the line he should have probably taken the ball and it is Jimenez who makes it 2-3 game on and then Hanschko himself after another crazy run out by Ederson gets fair on the draw. Yes, it has also been mentioned that Grealish late on with the deflected shot hits the crossbar, but what's wrong with City? It's almost as bad as are the Red Bull teams. Meanwhile, Arsenal put in a statement performance at Sporting Lisbon, winning 5-1. was the first game under new coach Teixeira for Sporting and they suffered the first defeat of the season in a resounding fashion. So although I have to say the final goal on a 5-1 was definitely a few goals too high, but in the first half, Arsenal made short shrift of Sporting. Martinelli scored in the 7th minute, Kai Havertz after a soccer assist taps it in from a short range and then Gabriel heads it in just before the half. However, Inacio pulls one back for Sporting and they were threatening to get maybe a 2-3 before a penalty that Saka then converts. Puts the game to rest. There were a few chances for Sporting in there as well but in the end it's Tosa who makes it 5-1 Jokeres late on. Hits also the crossbar but I think a 3-1 would probably have been more representative. And in Bern, Atalanta do concede the first goal but the Catalare put on a show. Assisting 3, scoring 2 and being the man of the match all over and Atalanta showing how deadly they can be even on an artificial pitch. Retake in the ninth minute. Beautiful 
beautiful the Catalada pass gives Atalanta the 1-0 lead then from a corner kick Ganvula actually gets the equalizer just two minutes later however it is the Catalada himself who in the 28th minute gives Atalanta the lead again then he assists Kolasinac a defender who runs free on goal and Retegi just a few minutes later 4-1 at the half the Catalada himself in the 56 gets his second goal of the evening and very late on Samarcic dances through the young boys defense and it is a 6-1 scoreline this Atalanta side might be unfancied but is super dangerous I definitely have them on my list for a slightly deeper Champions League run I'm not saying that they will reach a semi-final or final but they could go at least quarterfinal. Sturm Graz get their first Champions League win in 23 years. The first one without Ivica Osim at the helm. It's all their first win against Spanish opposition in the Champions League, beating Girona 1-0 at home. The winning goal came through Birith in the 59th minute. But it has to be said, especially in the first half, Girona had some great chances, none bigger than even Martin missing from point blank range an empty net. He manages to pull it from a few meters out over the bar. That was absolutely crazy. There was a nice Brian Hill assist in there as well. However, Sturm settled then late in the first half and in the second half they get the go-ahead goal and then see it out almost routinely. There were not really many nervy moments there. So big win for Sturm Graz but also big win for the Austrian league because those are vital points in the ranking. Probably the biggest shock result of Wednesday evening came in the other early kickoff with Zervenas Vesta beating Stuttgart 5-1. And that is by Stuttgart taking a fifth minute lead through the Mirovic. But then Silas, who actually came from Stuttgart, was not wanted there anymore. Gets equalized in the 12th minute. The Mirovic has a goal and disallowed for offside. And Krunic manages to get the second goal for Zervenas Vesta. And in the second half, it was all the Belgrade team with Ivanic heading it in after a corner. And then Radonjic adding two more. And PSV then completed the biggest turnaround, beating Schachter Donskis home 3 2 despite being 2 0 down at the half. And for the longest of time, they didn't seem like they were gonna find a breakthrough. Sikhan in the 8th minute and Zubkov in the 37th gave Schachter a not undeserved lead. However, it seemed to be all pointing towards PSV when Pedrinho for a really rough tackle was sent off with a straight red card. Still, Schachter seemed to hold out until Malik Tillman in the 87th minute pulls one back for PSV and he gets in the equalizer in the 90th minute with a really nice shot up in the corner and then PSV were pushing and Ricardo Pepe gets the winning goal. There was a little bit of doubt with VAR but PSV get a really, really big win for them. In the marquee fixture of match day 5, Liverpool rather easily beat Real Madrid 2-0 at home. An absolute dominant performance showing how dominant Liverpool are overall in Europe at the moment. And yes, Real Madrid is injury riddled, so we shouldn't maybe put too much into this overall performance. But still, they just don't look like a team. Especially when I look at how Mbappe is more selfishly running around than really is looking for his teammates. First half, the biggest chances fell to Liverpool. Darwin Nunez saw a shot that was deflected, cleared off the line. There was another one of his. There was really not much coming from Madrid. And in the second half, Slot's team really ratcheted up the pressure. And it is McAllister, after Bradley assisted, gives Liverpool the lead. Then Mbappe had the big chance for equalizer. It was a penalty that he takes rather poorly and sees safe by Kelleher. But on the other end, there was also a penalty for Liverpool. And Mohamed Salah puts it on the outside of the post in the 70th minute. Still, Cody Gakpo converts a really great header for the 2-0 in the 76th minute. And then Liverpool are cruising. The only team that is still perfect in the Champions League. Conversely, Real Madrid are sitting now in 24th spot. Have only two wins out of five games. Villa and Juve decide to play out a defensively sound nil-nil draw. There was a great chance for Juve that Amy Martinez cleared off the line. Then Villa thought late on they had gotten the winner. However, there was a slight tackle on Di Gregorio in the build-up. I guess in England this is not given. On the continent this is given. So there you go. It was a Spanish referee. But the game overall not much to talk home about. A much lively affair was the 1-1 draw between Celtic and Club. Bruges. I mean, Carter Vickers' own goal was probably the highlight of the evening for just slapstick moment when he wants to play it back to goalie Schmeichel, but Schmeichel is not there anymore. And he did it with such conviction, really looked funny in a way. But I would say Club Bruges are overall the more solid team, but then there's the Celtic oomph and they get the equalizer through Maeda. Overall, deserve it, draw. 
I guess. Unlike the German league rival Stuttgart, Dortmund had no problem going to a former Yugoslavian nation, beating Dinamo Zagreb 3-0 away from home. They were largely the better team. Jamie Gittens in the 41st minute gave Dortmund already the lead. Then Ben Zabaini had it end right after the half. And as the time expired, Girasi threw the legs of the goalie at a third. Bologna may have gotten the first Champions League goal, however their chances of advancing are more or less only theoretically anymore. They lose at home to Lille 2-1. They thought they had taken the lead in the fifth minute, but it was a clear offside. Then Mukau uses a defensive mishap of Bologna to give Lille the lead in the 44th minute. Lukumi then gets the big goal for Bologna. You think the game is on. They may push now for the winner, but only three minutes later Mukau again is the party pooper and scores his second goal gives Lille the win. And then we had potentially the liveliest game of the evening in the clash between Monaco and Benfica. Monaco still unbeaten up until that point. However, Benfica go their win 3-2. It was a comeback win because Benzegir gave Monaco already an early lead that then Pavlidis right after half could equalize. Both teams then had goals disallowed before Singo was sent off for an elbowing. Still Monaco take the lead again through Magasa. And you thought they might at least get a draw out of this, if not win the whole thing. However, then it's the Di Mario show who assists both Cabral and Amduni in the 84th and the 88th minute to give Benfica rather vital win. And their chances for advancing look now rather well. You've already seen the table while we are running through the results, but just a few points because after five matches, we can say already a little bit more. Liverpool, Inter, are the teams that have dominated this Champions League so far. Although I gotta say the draw at City for Inter probably counts now for a little bit less than it did back then. And also the loss of Milan against Liverpool probably is a little bit more excusable at this very moment. Still, it is what it is. Inter is still the better team than Milan at this moment, shown also in the table. I would also argue that Barcelona, Dortmund, Atalanta, Leverkusen, Arsenal will very likely get a top eight spot. The most interesting ones are, of course, that City are now out of the top 16, meaning they will not be seeded, whereas Milan just sneak in and Milan have a really easy schedule coming up. And then, of course, spots 24 and 25. Two really big names in Real Madrid and PSG. It's not unlikely that at least one of these will not make it into knockout stages. I'm looking especially at PSG. But as always, it's easy to look at the expected standings, which kind of confirms what, what I said before. Liverpool, Inter, Dortmund, Arsenal, Barcelona, Atalanta seem to be teams that go in. Bayern and Leverkusen also likely. Always have in mind that Milan have a rather easy schedule. They might have been unconvincing, but they have three very winnable games, so they might actually sneak into the top eight as well. Where is City expected to finish in 15th? I don't think it's beyond them to do so. And Real Madrid, of course, are now only at 21. PSG out, Stuttgart also out. There are a few surprise teams that are expected to make it. Celtic, Feyenoord, Club Rouge, Dinamo Zagreb. Rather surprising is so, and of course, Brest, Brest, Brest. But you know, they had a really good start. It will be tougher for them now going forward. But it's likely that they finish in the knockout places. And looking at the overall chances of winning the entire thing, it's still kind of funny to see Manchester City top there. But we have already seen it that City might fall and then late on the kick into the next gear alone without Rodri and others. It might be a different proposition. We also see Real Madrid only falling to fifth. Liverpool, Arsenal, Inter. That's what I said. I think Atalanta is highly underrated at the moment. I really think they could do something. Now I'm looking, of course, at Milan. Sitting at the moment at 13th, it looks quite likely that they have qualified already for the knockout stage and it will depend on the seeding where they will end up further. Now, if I look at the upcoming matches, for me, the most intriguing one is, of course, Atalanta against Real Madrid. Although this is exactly the type of game that probably Real Madrid might win, but this is also the biggest stumbling block. Atalanta could make themselves very famous if they do so. They had only home draws so far, so watch out for that. I think Leverkusen against Inter is another really interesting match on the day. And then the two Red Bull teams taking on also Aston Villa and PSG. Could they get a win there? Gotta be seen. I don't think that Salzburg will get anything against PSG, even though they are faltering. On Wednesday, Milan take on Cervenas Vesda. It was a game that I was much more calm about before I saw Cervenas Vesda against Stuttgart. I think the most interesting one has to be Dortmund against Barcelona. Arsenal against 
Monaco doesn't sound so bad, although Arsenal will win this easily. And then Juve against City. That's two big names, but both teams are rather imperfect. And lastly, side note, Feyenoord face Sparta. Why is this interesting? Well, after Slot left for Liverpool, Coach Briske went from Sparta to Feyenoord. So that might be an interesting one, just for that reason. So this concludes the review of match day five. I think we're getting somewhere with this Champions League. And now it starts to take shape. We feel a little bit more. There's some jeopardy for some big names in there. That makes it interesting. Still not quite convinced of the new format because, you know, games are thrown out and you don't really know which one is the one to watch for. Really, yeah, you better watch them all and see how it pans out. Of course, the big names are always the big attraction. But at least I can say slowly, I think this is becoming more interesting. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the Champions League. Let me know how your team did. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!